Greetings once again. Um, welcome to back to Product One's uh, YouTube series. Um, it seems like uh, a while ago uh, we did Creo Simulate, and today we are picking off that particular topic and speaking about a couple of 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 things that one can do inside Creo Simulate. So today we are looking at at, at Creo and we're looking at modal analysis basically a study of dynamic properties of a system and the idea is to provide an overview of the limits of a system so within the frequency domain and we're going to now be exploring even advanced features for for creo simulate which is weighted links so weighted links, uh, you will see in a second, allows you to transfer displacement of so-called independent references. These are points, edges, and curves uh, to a dependent point. So now this technique, it's pretty special in the sense that you take the weight average and transfer them to a dependent point. And that uh, particular point can also rotate as well to simulate, be it a motor and so forth. So what I have, in this demonstration is a gearbox and all that I want to do is have the bearing stiffness effect in that particular assembly it will be extremely difficult if I don't have a physical object or off-the-shelf item like a bearing in this case whereby if this part were to move and affect this component here without having a physical object in there. So I need to find a way of connecting those two structures using clever objects like your weighted links. So let's get started. Inside Creo Parametric, I can now go into Creo Simulate, which is our structural analysis, uh, 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 what you call extension. The first thing that I'm going to do here is start assigning the material. So, of course, you can choose by starting to put in loads or put in constraints. It's generally up to you. But the process is so easy in a sense that to apply material for this, I can pick a component where I can apply my material. And of course, you can create your own material if you have specific uh, values or, or requirements. So now that I've actually applied the material, that simply means that the algorithm inside Creo Simulate can now break these structures into small little chunks called elements. So that process is called meshing. I'm going to be covering a little bit of that a bit later. Now, why this is actually important is that without you defining the material, there's no way in running the analysis because what are you gauging your analysis on? All right, because all you're looking at is the strength of material. How will this react in certain conditions and what will be the effect when the material is steel or aluminum or whatever the case is. Moving right along, I'm going to apply what we call constraints. Constraints, basically, these are boundary conditions where I am simulating as if like that object is either connected through bolts or welds. It could be anything. So remember, you're trying to mimic real life conditions. So I'm going to fix this uh, like that. The one other thing that I want to do as well here is to apply what we call a volume region. So if you can have a look, if I select that shaft, I have a situation where the entire shaft gets highlighted. But what if it happens that I'm having a scenario where I only want to select a certain surface? Right? Not the entire shaft, just the certain surface. I can do that with what we call a volume region. So if I want to apply a volume region, I get to select what component I want to apply this volume region on. And then, of course, I get to select my sketching environment. All that I have to do now is specify that, look, I want to take this here, and create a rectangle. So that's my volume. I'm not going to worry about dimensions for this instance because all that I'm trying to do here is do a surface or in this case a volume 
that will cover that entire surface. And I'm just going to do it on both sides. So I can choose uh, different entities, but this is what I have. Now look, I can sort of like select certain portions of that shaft and say the, the load or the bearing is actually acting here. Because when I were to put in the bearing, it will only get contact at specific sections of the shaft, not entire shaft. So that's what I was aiming for here. Now, I'm going to create my weighted link. First thing that I'm going to do is showcase the points. You'll see this in a second. And now I can define to say that that surface, if I were to have a weighted link that goes on to a particular point, this point here to be specific, this is what I have. So I've essentially taken that entire surface and connected it with that point in the middle. I'm going to do the same here to say I want to have a weighted link in that area and connect it to a separate point. So I will come back to this side. I want to do exactly the same on this side as well. So I will select the surface, pick weighted link and select the point in which I want to connect it to. Last but not least, I'm going to do the same with the last point. Now, those points are independent of each other, so I need to connect those. Because remember, when you're having a, a bearing, that bearing will touch essentially that surface and also the surface. So now we already know that there's a connection between that surface and the point here, this surface and that point there. So we need to link the two together. And we use, this is very clever, we use springs, but not just any springs, advanced springs where we select those two points and even define the spring property. So for an example, I'm going to specify the spring stiffness. I'm going to specify a spring stiffness for those two values. This is, of course, x and x is 0, y, and then z. So that is essentially what's on the right-hand side. If now we were to look at this side over here, I'm going to do essentially the same. The only difference, though, with this one is that's the side where there will be a motor. So that means that there will also be a translation or spring stiffness around the y value, so or x value rather. So this is what I'm having here. And I'll make the values a little bit different as well. And what I'm going to do, what we didn't have on the other side, is the torsional properties of the spring. So that is what I have. And to be honest with you, that's all that you need to define weighted links to simulate a bearing in this particular instance. All that I'm going to have to do now is to see if, remember the whole purpose of this is to see if I'm getting a desired effect if this system were to be analyzed within a certain uh, frequency domain. So by that, I'm going to rely on what we call a modal analysis. So if I were to take a modal analysis, I'm going to choose constraint because it's actually constrained in this instance. I just want to see how this system will behave. Immediately when I say, okay, it runs, it is that quick. So this is one of the things that I always like to do because I want to see how the system will behave before I can now do things like your static analysis that might take longer. So I get to see if how uh, my models or components will move like. In fact, let's not rerun this. I just want to just see the results. I'll drag in the results window so that you see on this side. So as you can see, I've got four frequency modes. I can choose what is it that I want to look at. I'm going to say I want to look at model and I want to shade the surface and animate them as well. Now, immediately when I do that, you get to see that if this shaft were to move, it affects the outer aluminium part as well. Of course, I can interrogate multiple frequency domains. I can say, okay, fine, let me compare this 
from the other frequency domain. So you can actually see different movements there and you can do the same if uh, you were to look at the third option as well, which is essentially that one. All right. Now, the power of this is you get to see how your model behaves in situations where it's subjected to certain movements and so forth. Of course, you can create a fringe plot of that, but that's the power of having weighted links connecting into a particular point to have a desired effect. And for this, you need advanced simulate license. And if you're interested in some of these, please give us a shout. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.